to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again. And today, we have another show lined up for y'all. We have an amazing guest. We, we have an amazing person doing amazing things. She's also a book author over uh, many books. The book that we will be discovering today is Extravagant Love, Exploring God's Passion for Us. And our guest for today is Carol Angle Averett. And she is going to tell us a little bit about herself and all about this book. So first, I want to welcome you to the show and say, how are you doing, Carol? Well, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be with you, Shmael. So with uh, the book that, that you've written, that <clears throat> we're going to explore, uh, Extravagant Love, Exploring God's Passion for Us, kind of give us a little backdrop of what this book is about, what inspired you to write it. All right. Um, I had already written a number of faith-based books, and had begun uh, teaching uh, and having prayer and share times in my home. And during one of these prayer and share times, we had um, a little of an unusual uh, event happen. A young woman joined us that I had never met before, and she came with a friend. And as it turned out, the older woman that I had giving her testimony that day happened to have had some of the very same experiences that this young woman was going through. And as a result, uh, she was able to sort of pour out our heart to us in a very um, safe environment. And we surrounded her with uh, our arms and and prayers. And uh, it was really just such a remarkable experience. And after everyone had left, uh, it occurred to me that that entire event had really been shaped by the Lord for her. And um, so I, I, I sat alone in my house for a long time after everyone had gone and began thinking back over John 3.16, which, of course, everyone is uh, is probably the most familiar of all verses in the Bible. And I was repeating it to myself, and suddenly just the words... For God so loved the world. And I thought, yes, that's so true. But today, Lord, you gave me a glimpse of how he can so focus in a laser-like way on just one person that's in need. And we hopefully met a great deal of the needs of that young woman that day. And um, I have sort of counseled her and been with her uh, a number of times since. And it was it was just a remarkable experience for all of us. Out of that, I began thinking about, you know, God's love is so extravagant. And sometimes we forget all of the variety of the characteristics that go along with that love. And so out of that, out of that experience that day with the young woman and the and the older women that were there to uh, sort of shepherd her and pray for her and comfort her, grew the idea to write a book about his extravagant love and the varying characteristics as I saw them in the Bible. And so I wrote a book with 12 chapters, 12 different characteristics in each chapter. Each chapter could really be a standalone chapter. And there are study questions at the end of each chapter. So you could use it um, if you didn't want to do all 12 chapters for 12 weeks in your Bible study. You could pick out maybe three or four or five that are your favorites. And so that is really, that's the structure of the book. And that, that's the, the basically what the book is about. And I uh, listen to some shows too. You you have a very extensive uh experience with writing about military history too and i thought that was pretty awesome what has faith uh how has faith i know this is not an unusual question shamai i get i get asked this all the time you know how is it that you write military histories true stories of military histories and faith-based books and i have to i have to tell you that those are really two of my passions 
to explore things that happen uh, within the military and to our veterans and things that happen during wartime. And so often, of course, they're, they are dealing with life and death issues there. And then in my faith-based books, um, we see that so much of the uh, things that go on on this earth are framed uh, by people fighting among each other. And of course, the Prince of Peace came to show us uh, a different way and uh, a, a different approach to things. And yet it's a battle. It's a spiritual battle that we're in. And so for me, the, the two sort of go hand in hand. And I love meeting people and interviewing people. Uh, I was reading a little bit about your own background, and that seems to be a love that you have as well. You enjoy talking to people and hearing their stories and relating their stories, learning their stories. And that's exactly what I have done all my life as a journalist. Uh, I was 14 years with a magazine where I interviewed people and wrote their stories. And since then, I've picked it up in terms of books, learning stories and writing their stories. I had an uncle. I have a military family. And one of my uncles was in the Second World War. He was a chief mechanic for a man by the name of General Claire Lee Chenault, who was head of the Flying Tigers in Burma. And my uncle Jasper used to say in vernacular, um, just ain't no uh, fake stories ever as good as the real ones. And so I grew up hearing that and believing that. And I, I find that true. I, I love true stories, real stories about people. And we have that in the Bible. And we certainly have that with stories that uh, are part of our military history and our veterans. And speaking of stories in your book, you have an introduction that compares uh, the love of God to a gift that your dad gave you uh, when you were younger. If you could uh, share with the audience a little bit about that. All right. All right. I will. Um, it was a very special gift. My my parents were very hardworking uh, people that worked six days a week. Um, my mom sold clothes. My dad sold shoes. He was a shoe salesman. So we didn't have a lot extra. And um, he went away on a business trip <clears throat> with his bosses one time, and he had gone to St. Louis, and he brought me back a gift. And the gift was um, a very, very beautiful little evening bag. And I was about 12 or 13. I was so awkward. Uh, never had any hopes that, you know, I might would be asked to go anywhere. Um but the little evening bag made me feel so special. It was so beautiful. It had pearls on it and um, had a beautiful little place where you could keep a compact on the inside, maybe a little tube of lipstick. And for my dad, who at that time was the most important person, male in my life, um, it, was, it, was, it was as if he was seeing me as I would might turn out to be a little bit later, not as an awkward teenager. And it just made such an impression on me. Um, I don't know how he even afforded it. Uh, we, we really had no, no extras for things like that. He must have saved up his lunch money. But later on, when I became a Christian at the age of 30, I realized that God um, comes to us in the same kind of way while we're still awkward and while we're still struggling around trying to find out, you know, who in the world we are and what, what we're about on this earth and why we're here. And it reminded me that little pearl evening bag. That's the same way that God shows his love to us. He loves us long before we do. He, lo he loves us. The Bible says uh, we love because he first loved us. And so that was such a special gift. And it always reminds me uh, of God's love for us, too. Once again, you listen to Be Focus Radio, and we're talking about extracting love, exploring God's passion for us is by our amazing guest uh, for today is Carol Engel Averett. And when you look back at your personal experience with faith and the journey that you took to come across this book, to write for people, uh, what core takeaway do you hope people can can experience after reading your book 
and learning more about God? Well, I'll, t- I'll tell you, Shema, um, I was raised in a Christian home. My, uh, we were in church. My parents were committed Christians. We were in church every Sunday morning. And at that time, it was every Sunday night and every Wednesday night, too. But it, the best way that I can explain it is that it never took on me. I just had so many questions. You know, why would God allow it? You know, why would God allow certain things to happen? Why were there so many people in my church who said they were Christians, but just by the way they acted, just, I don't know, just, you just could hardly believe it. And so I had a lot of questions. And I grew up as a teenager and as a young person in my early 20s, and my life just uh, turned into a big mess, a big mess. And I made one wrong decision after another. And God just sort of allowed me to continue to uh, chew up the rope, so to speak. And one night, uh, I was by myself in my home. I had a little boy, a little toddler. I had reached the end of my rope. And I was floundering, didn't know what to do. And I had a very radical experience that night. Um, God showed me that. The only way that my life would ever turn around, would ever make sense, was that if I gave it to him. And I did. And that next morning I got up. I had not slept for weeks. In fact, I was really thinking about perhaps just doing away with myself. But I got up that next morning and I knew something happened. I couldn't have explained it to you. I was still too much of a baby uh, spiritually. But I was trying to cook some breakfast on the stove for my little boy, and I had the bacon going, and I was shoving the iron skillet back and forth to get that bacon cooked. And I, I suddenly realized that I, I felt a, an almost like a heat, an incredible warmth. And I thought, well, my gosh, I've got this uh, thing turned up too high. So I stepped back from the stove, and I still felt that warmth. And I felt that for about two or three days. Gradually, it went away. But it was like God was just surrounding me with his love during that time, just like we surrounded that young woman in my home a few years ago. And I was so um, impressed again, so swept away again by the love that God has for us. And all we have to do is turn to him, turn to him. And he's waiting with his arms open and with his extravagant love waiting for us. And that event happened to me that night when I was alone in in my home when I was 30. And I have loved and followed him ever since that day. And every day is an adventure with him. His love is always bringing up new things for you to discover and explore with him, meeting people, sharing your faith, sharing Jesus. Um, it's, 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 It's really an adventure. It's an adventure in his extravagant love. And there's a point where you you talk about the end of your rope. And I want to touch on that because uh, there's a quote by uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt where he says, when you reach the end of your rope, tie a knot on it and hang on. And I couldn't help but think about that because I feel sometimes that's kind of what we have to do. Uh, We have to hang on. And uh, if, if you if I can say, uh, you know, weather the storm until it passes and then there can be hope, you know, after it passes. So my point of all that is with your book, Extravagant Extravagant Love, it's that kind of similar characteristic that you're trying to give people hope to hold on to. Yes. And that quote that you uh, just uh, quoted from FDR is a beautiful one. I would just simply add what we have to make sure, what a person has to make sure when they are at the end of their rope and that they tie that knot, that the other end of that rope is in the hands of Jesus. That's the only way that that rope becomes a lifeline. It turns from a rope, just a natural rope with a knot in it, to something that is a lifeline to Jesus himself. And once he grabs your hand, you can let go, but he will not let go of you. 
Because we all make mistakes even after we turn our hearts over to him, after we become a Christian. But he takes even those moments and turns them into something very beautiful. So a lot of times I think he just allows us to get to that end, the end of ourselves, where we're like, you know what? I don't know what to do. I've tried this. I've tried that. I, I don't know. I've worked in, um, I've worked in the area of uh, women's prison ministries, and I've talked to so many of the women that are there, and they say to me, "You know, we I had to get to the end of it. I had to get to the end of my rope, the end of myself. That's where I was that night." And they say to me, "You know, when I found Jesus, when I finally turned my life over to Him, looked to Him." for the hope and the love that I had always wanted to have. He rushed in, and that was exactly my experience. He he didn't just slowly come to me. He rushed in when I turned to him. And he will do that for anyone that turns to him. And just all you have to do is just glance his way, and he's there. If you're listening to right now, you listen on Refocus Radio, and we're talking to our guest, Carol Angle Avery, and you can get her book anywhere you can get a book, but the easiest one for a lot of people is Amazon. So ho- go to Amazon and, and search for Extravagant Love, Exploring God's Passion for Us. And when when you use uh, stories as illustrations in your book, uh, there's nothing more powerful than real life stories. I mean... They they really help us uh, see yeah. a different perspective that we may have uh, never have gotten a chance to see. Uh, how important is it uh, using that tool to illustrate to the readers uh, real life experiences? Absolutely. Uh, nothing speaks like what you personally have experienced. Nothing speaks like someone sharing their personal experiences with you. Um, I've shared my testimony, oh, I don't know, dozens and dozens of times at women's conferences and Bible studies. And it's always new. There's the, it, it always feels new every time I share it because it was such a uh, a dark night of the soul that night. And it became the lowest, the lowest point of my life became the highest point of my life in his hands. And your listeners, the same, well, can you, you can experience the same thing. Um, it, it's not as hard as some people, you know, make it out to be. It's just a turning to him, a turning to Jesus. And there he is. He's waiting. And kind of uh, touch on that more. Uh, what do you remember how you felt the moment you started to turn, uh, what was that experience like making that, that transition? That night, as I was crying, and I had never cried so hard in my life, I had not slept for about six weeks. I was, as I said before, I was at the end of my rope. And all of a sudden, in my mind, now this is not something that I saw, this was in my mind, there was this bright shining light And in the background were charred mountains and a desert. And some way or another, I knew that that mental picture of these barren mountains and this desert with nothing growing on it was a visual picture of my life up to that point. And when I saw that bright shining light, it was just for a brief, I mean, we're talking a split second. I knew at the very deepest part of my being that that was a sign from God himself, a supreme being. And I turned to that light, and here's what I said. These words just, I don't even know where they came from. They just came from the bottom of my soul, from my very toes all the way out. And I just spoke to that light. I said, I belong to you. Take me, mold me. And the moment those words came out of my mouth, I felt like a thousand pounds had been lifted from my shoulders. I, I felt like I had suddenly, the dam of, of water had suddenly burst forth and I was flowing with it. They're like Almost like I had put my hand in an electrical current and I was caught up in it. And I, I slept that night for the first night in weeks. And I, I knew 
I knew God was with me. And it has been that way. I have grown, obviously, in the knowledge of him. I began reading my Bible uh, right at first. I, I, I didn't want to read anything except the four Gospels. And within the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, I didn't want to read anything except just what Jesus himself said. I wanted to go to the very source. I wanted to see. And for the first time in my life, I could really understand what was being said in the Bible. And so I've grown tremendously since that night. But I remember it as vividly as if it happened last night. And that's been 40 years ago. So Christ is there. He is here. He is alive. He is a well. He is still looking for people with his arms outstretched, his hands open, and his magnificent, extravagant love available to everyone. All you, all you need to do is you just turn, just turn to him. You talk about also uh, the intangible qualities like thoughtfulness, caring, and humility. With that perspective and understanding, you mentioned about uh, reading the Bible. How do we kind of take off the filters and read the Bible from a perspective of I'm willing to learn, not just read? Yeah, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, I think, first of all, becoming deeper, deepening your relationship with Jesus Christ, you, you need to be honest with yourself and with him. He knows it all anyway. And he knows everything that you've thought. He knows everything that you've done. He knows everything I've thought, everything I've done. So it's not like you're... <laughs> You're you're not talking to someone or, or, or dealing with someone who doesn't know. He already knows. He already knows what your dreams are, what your hopes are. Uh, he knows which dreams have been lost, ones you've given up on. He knows uh, what you would much rather have been, maybe perhaps a different something that happened to you years before that, that wasn't even your doing something that was done to you. He knows all about that. And what he wants is for you to be honest, come to him with an open heart. And when you read your Bible that way, then it begins to open up and you begin to see you have his help reading it. You have the Holy Spirit's help reading it. And you just be you just be honest with yourself and look at it. Look at the thing. Say, Lord, you know, help me understand. If you get to a passage and you're not sure, just just turn to him and say, Lord, I don't understand this passage. I don't understand it. Help me understand. And he will. He does that. He 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 he's not he has no intention of being mysterious to us. He has no intention of being elusive. He wants us to understand him. He opens his heart to us. And nothing makes him, and, I, and I'll use this tenderly, nothing makes him happier than to share who he is with us. And, of course, the greatest moment of sharing, as we know, was when Jesus went to the cross and he died for us, for each one of us, for our sins. He was resurrected on the third day. And he lives today to continue bringing those who need him, want him, want to be a part of his kingdom, want to be a part of his life. He opens his arms to us. Once again, this is Reflux of Radio, talking to our guest today, Carol Ango, Avery and about her book, Extravagant Love, Exploring God's Passion for Us. And I kind of want to uh, hit on the subtitle, uh, Exploring God's Passion for Us, because I think that goes hand in hand with everything you're saying about uh, taking time to read the Bible, uh, I think having the mindset and approach of exploring the Bible is is a is a key ingredient to take off the excuses like I'm too busy, you know, it doesn't work for me, or I've been reading for years, I haven't felt anything, because from your point of view. 
how does uh, one, especially one who's a new uh, believer, right, take right. those excuses away and just right. Right. have a relationship? Let me let me share a quick um, quote from you from an author that's uh, very well known, an American author, Toni Morrison. She's a Pulitzer Prize winner, wonderful author in her own right. And in one of her books, she has one of her characters, again, speaking in vernacular, just like my uncle did. Um, and here's one of the quotes from her, one of my favorite quotes. She says, Love is or it ain't. Thin love ain't no love at all. And whether we want to admit it or not, probably all of us have experienced someone loving us with thin love. And if we were truthful with ourselves, really truthful, we've probably loved somebody in return with thin love. So, we all know that human love has its limitations. It just does. We, you know, it's conditional. We sometimes will say, you know, we'll, we'll love somebody. Well, we'll love them until they uh, uh, let us down. Might not love them much after that. Or we have a love that vacillates. We get up one morning, we don't feel uh, particularly uh, cheerful or we don't feel particularly good, and uh, we wind up showing somebody um, thin love that day. That's exactly opposite of God's love. God's love comes to us, and it's unconditional. God's love comes to us, and it is always thoughtful. And I have a chapter in the book called Extravagant Thoughtfulness. God's love comes to us sometimes in the most creative ways. And I have a chapter in the book called Extravagant Creativity. That his love is so creative. How, what he does to show me he loves me might be completely different from how he shows it to, to you or to, to one of our listeners. But he, he, can, he can do that. His love is so creative. His love is so uh, committed. His love is so diligent. It, it's all the things that what human love lacks, what we wish human love were, but we're just not. We're, we are humans, but, but not God. God's love is so deep. It's so committed. Um, it's so creative. It's so thoughtful. All the things that we wish we could, how we wish we could love, how we wish other people loved us, that's how he loves us. You also in the book uh, talk about ancient customs and symbols from the Bible, uh, biblical times. If you can real quick with the audience, um, explore that a little bit with us and how you use that. All right. The um, If you find out what, let's put it this way, the lay of the land is when you're studying a specific event in history, it will help you understand what the people during that time were thinking, what they meant when they said a certain thing or how they used a certain word. And so what I have found with the Bible, because, you know, I mean, after all, most of it was was written several thousand years ago. Um, if we understand their customs and their uh, what what things were like when they were living, then we can understand what the passages mean. We, we have a better understanding of, of what they would, would mean when they would say this or that or when something would happen. Their customs, if we understand their customs and we understand better what the passage. And, and just what that does is it just helps make the Bible richer, helps us understand it more. Um, the study of the Bible, some people, of course, have spent an entire lifetime just studying the Bible, you could do that. But at the same time, it's simple enough, the message, the basic message is simple enough. I've seen young children, you know, you tell them about uh, certain things in the Bible, and they will just, they understand it. They understand that Jesus loves them, and that he uh, play, doesn't play favorites. He loves everybody. God so loved the world, that's everybody, everybody in it. And so the, 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 the Bible 
can be as deep as you want to delve into it and study it, but it can also be as simple, simple enough for children to understand it. Talking to our guest today, Carol Angle Avery, in her book, Extravagant Love, Exploring God's Passion for Us. You can get this book on Amazon, and I suggest you probably look her up on Google because she has been on other podcast shows, too. And I think you really appreciate her uh, history on military as well. I think those uh, episodes are pretty, pretty awesome to, to take a time to listen and enjoy those. Man, once again, uh, time has flown by fast, but it was a great call to action that our listeners can do to stay up to date to what you're doing. Oh, thank you so much. It's just been a pleasure, my honor to speak with you. Um, wish God's love on you and all that are listening to your recording and wish you the very best uh, with what you're doing with I Am Refocused. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. You're, you're so welcome. Have a blessed day. Thank you.